Right, so I'm going to begin by asking just why the story of, of Judy and why now? Why, why do you think this is uh, the right time for this to be told? Um, gosh, no one else, that's it. Ask me that again. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, I suppose, you know, we, we began this movie, I guess, before the Me Too movement uh, in terms of its development. And, but I guess it was in our minds that we were making a piece about what it meant to be a woman in the entertainment industry and you know, how the, her early years at the studio had affected her later life. Um, and then the kind of Me Too movement happened and it had this sort of you know, awful greater resonance. Uh, and, and, but I do think Judy is an icon for this generation is kind of interesting, you know, the, the way that she was sort of very accepting of outsiders, people who identified in all sorts of diverse ways, the way she was pressurized by a system and then kind of rebelled against it um, and was spat out by that system but then kept coming back when they would be spat out and, and fought the system. You know, I think in some ways Garland's rebellious free identity is actually more more iconic even than someone like Marilyn Monroe now, who, who of course was, a, was a, a star in her own right. But I think what she stands for is sort of very 21st century now. Because yeah. it wasn't sort of originally a play, but obviously but when you see it on the big screen, it's such an internalised display by, by mm. Renee. And I mean, there's and it's sort of close-ups of her face mm. where you really, it's her eyes. Mm. I mean, that's the real luxury of cinema, isn't mm. it? That, that, that ability to, to get up close of the camera that yeah. you could never replicate on stage. Yeah, I mean, I mean all drama should operate mm. through subtext, but you particularly... Um, particularly film, and I, I think you know, a play is always at the end of the day about a kind of argument. You know, you leave a, a, you leave the theatre wanting to kind of chew the fat over it, and, and that's the great thing about theatre. But I think film, particularly feature film, is is about character. You know, and to get a big close up on on a great actor, it's, you can tell so many stories in that. And it was just a real pleasure to be able to kind of really plot in complicated inner life for, for Garland, particularly because there's a sort of surface Judy, which is funny and wisecracking and, you know, a bit camp. And uh, 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 But then there was a great loneliness. She talks a lot about her loneliness. And actually, there's these wonderful recordings she made in the late 60s, audio recordings, where you are let into the they're almost like stream of consciousness sort of um, uh, utterances from somebody who's clearly on the edge, but also much more intelligent and deep thinking than maybe the sort of cliche of Garland. Because yeah, you mentioned that kind of loneliness, and I mean a lot, a lot of it is in this is the the moment you know we'll see her on stage doing the performance, and then just just straight away afterwards that moment when she's just by herself, and she seems to be very scrutinised over her own work a lot. I was wondering, as a as a creative, do you, are you the same? Do you scrutinise over over your work? What's your relationship like with your own with your your own material, be it on stage or on screen? You mean do you obsess with it? Like yeah, 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 you, yeah. And also, are you okay sort of watching it? Do you find it? Are you are you quite? Um, do you scrutinise over it a lot? Yeah. Are you quite critical of your own work? Yeah, I mean, it becomes. Uh, it's funny with this film because we finished it a few months ago, eight or nine months ago, and uh, going back to watch it again, and I think back to how obsessive I became about mm -hmm. the tiniest thing, like tiny noises in the background or frames, and you go, "Gosh, you know, let it go, let it go." Mm -hmm. um, I think any the act of creating anything on stage or screen, you have to obsess. Mm -hmm. And then you get closer and closer and closer to it, and then it passes away to the audience. And uh, you know, you, it's like letting a child go to school or something. It's quite moving when you have to do that. And so, so what, what I mean too, I mean, Judy, Judy is such a, a, an icon of kind of cinema. And I was speaking to my mum uh, yesterday about the movie, and she was saying that Judy Garland is the person that she feels best represents what cinema is to her. I was mm -hmm. wondering who's your, Judy, I mean, it could be Judy, but I mean, who, 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 who would you say is the person that you most associate with kind of the art form that is cinema? God, that's a good question. Um, you mean an actor or? Yeah, actor, actress, yeah. Uh, I mean, I love Daniel Day-Lewis, I suppose, yeah. just in terms of the range of his work. Uh, but actually, you know, I. Probably, like I, I think those things are really shaped by childhood, aren't they? And I, I remember people like Steve McQueen and Paul Newman, actually, when I was young, watching their old films on t on TV and thinking, wow, a, a movie star just is. You know, they're not trying to be something, they just are. And I think that's, you know, when you shoot a star, you feel that. You feel that they sort of just transmit something. People say, oh, well, what makes them special? What's their, is it their beauty? No, it's not. They just, once you call action, they kind of transmit an energy that is totally present and not performed. And uh, so 
so I kind of, even though Renee is extraordinary as Judy, and, and even though she transforms so completely, and it is a remarkable impersonation, it's her inner self that I find wonderful as an actor. Mm. And uh, what, so I was wondering too, I mean, obviously you're so, so renowned for your work on stage as well, but what really changes from a kind of discipline point of view when you direct? Because I, I guess you're so used to character work. Mm. So in a biopic, that kind of translates perfectly, doesn't it, in some ways, because this is such a film all about the characters. Yeah. Do you find yourself, do, are you, do you speak a lot to the sort of actors? Do you, do you find that you've taken a lot of, or did you have to uh, change a lot of the way you, you operate? Or did you try and just translate your own kind of skills and sensibilities over to screen? It's funny, I mean, pe people make movies from all sorts of different backgrounds. You can come from editing or camera or producing or writing, acting even. Uh, and I think you always feel like I've got a strong suit and a, and a weaker suit. I mean, actors is something I just feel I just know and have been around all my life. I, I, the difference on stage is you're trying to build a performance that's going to sustain over multiple, like, multiple evenings, over weeks and weeks, whereas on, on film you're trying to catch moments, lightning. Um, I, I don't really like rehearsing on camera, which is odd for a theatre director. I, li I like it all happening in the, sh in the run of takes you do on, on, the, on the size of shot you're using. Uh, but I guess what I could bring was a lot of the sort of earlier rehearsal process with Renee, kind of both on the script, but also just in the way we would physicalize the songs or kind of exercises we'd do around, around the, the character. Um, they're different art forms, though, different art forms. Brilliant. Thanks so much for your time. Much appreciated.